Hello and welcome back to the Dr O'Donovan Medicine Made Easy YouTube channel where today we're going to be looking at something called a branchial cleft cyst which is the most common lateral neck congenital abnormality and it accounts for around 20% of all neck clumps in kids. This is a photo of a child with a branchial cleft cyst and you can see it here in his lateral left neck. The causes for branchial cleft cysts are what we're going to cover next, and they usually form because of failure of the pharyngeal clefts to involute, so cast your minds back to embryology. So in um, basic embryology, we'll just try to understand why they form. So the branchial apparatus is a derivative of the foregut, which is developed during the second fetal week, and you can see the foregut here. You probably remember these kind of diagrams from first or second year of medical school. And the foregut is consisting of five paired pharyngeal arches. So you've got pharyngeal arch one here, two, three, and so on. And importantly, these pharyngeal arches are separated internally by four endodermal pouches and externally by four ectodermal clefts. And so here you can see the pharyngeal clefts, which are highlighted in this area, and internally you can see the pharyngeal pouches. Now approximately 80% of branchial cleft abnormalities present as a cyst and about 95% of these are formed from the region of the second branchial arch. So this area here which is the second branchial arch, failure of involution of these is the main cause for branchial cleft cysts. The remaining 5% of the cysts arise from the regions of the first, third and fourth arches. Now in terms of presentation, a branchial cleft cyst usually presents as a painless, mobile and fluctuant mass located along the anterior border of sternocleidomastoid muscle. So if you cast your minds back to the chart that we saw earlier on, here's the branchial cleft cyst which I've just outlined, here's your sternocleidomastoid muscle which I'm just highlighting in red here on the picture on the right, and here's your typical location of a branchial cyst. However, remember they can occur anywhere, just most commonly they're in the lateral area of the neck. And that's really important because when you're thinking of other differentials, you might think of something like a thyroglossal duct cyst. That's here and it's more commonly in the midline, similarly a dermoid cyst. Now, most patients don't normally notice them until they become infected, at which point they're often visible. And we'll look at an example of an infected branchial cleft cyst here. You can see this really large lateral neck swelling here. This is obviously someone who's had a branchial cleft cyst, it's now infected, it's collected, and you may see them coming back and forth to either ENT clinics or accident emergency or consulting their GP or family care physician. You can drain these, but ultimately they're going to need to be removed in order to resolve these symptoms. But usually you'd wait until the infection has been resolved until you'd attempt to remove it. In terms of diagnosis, it's usually a clinical diagnosis. However, in adults, you should assume and investigate as cancer until proven otherwise. Anything that's like this, a large neck swelling, you really need to be thinking about red flag symptoms, and that would be cancer in this patient. In terms of imaging investigations, well, you could scan the patient with an ultrasound. However, CT and MRI can also be done if necessary for further anatomical definition of the cyst if you're to prepare for further surgical excision. And I'm just going to give you an example here. This is a CT scan and here you can see a clear branchial cleft cyst which has gathered. In terms of management, well if the patient's asymptomatic, they can be managed conservatively. However, otherwise, um, treatment usually involves surgical excision. So here you can see an excised branchial cleft cyst and this is a typical scar that would remain. Patients can have a drain put in. Ideally, the drain volume should be low before the discharge and you should give them adequate analgesia. I hope that was helpful. Um, I'm going to include some useful links to the video in the description section. And as ever, if you've enjoyed it, please remember to like the video, subscribe to the channel for more future videos, and leave a comment in the comment section if there's anything that you'd like me to clarify. Thanks again for watching and your support, and good luck in your studies.